Who is like you, O Lord among the gods? Who is like you, majestic in holiness, awesome in splendor, doing wonders? Good morning. This is the Leeward Islands District Devotions being brought to you this week by the Angular Circuit. I am Ken Banks, a local preacher. Let us pray. God of majesty and power, who spoke and the world was, who breathed and this world lived, who sees our thoughts and reads our hearts, who loves us more than we deserve or can even imagine, how can we not bring today our sacrifices of praise? To you, O Lord, we bring our lives, troubled, broken, or at ease a sacrificial offering for you to use. Take away our selfishness and teach to love as you loved. And take away our sense of pride and show us the meaning of true humility. Take away our blindness and show us the world through your eyes. Take away our greed and teach us how to give as you gave. Show us your ways, teach us your paths, that we may walk more closely with you. Our theme this week is based on the hymn of Charles Wesley, Your Faithfulness, Lord, Each Moment We Find, which we'll now sing comes from 179 in Voices and Praise. As I said earlier, our theme this week is your faithfulness, Lord, each moment we find. Our sub-theme today is God's faithfulness as King. We read for the scripture, Psalm 146. 
praise the Lord, O my soul. I will praise the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praises to my God all my life long. Do not put your trust in princes or in mortals in whom there is no help. When their breath departs, they return to the earth. On that very day, their plans perish. Happy are those whose help is the God of Jacob, whose hope is the Lord their God, who made heaven and earth, the sea and all that is in them, who keeps faith forever. The Lord will reign forever. Your God, O Zion, for all generations. Praise the Lord. Cardinal Woosley was a faithful subject of King Henry VIII of England. For many years, he was an influential advisor and favorite of the king. Woosley did the king's bidding, but he lost the king's favor because he would do his assistance in getting a divorce from Catherine of Aragon. Woosley thought that Anne Boleyn, whom the king wanted to marry, was not worthy to be queen. Wolsey was stripped of his power and his wealth by his king. He was later charged with treason, which would have resulted in his execution, but he died before the trial. In talking to Thomas Cromwell, his only remaining friend, he said, My robe and my integrity to heaven is all I dare now call mine own. But had I but served my God with half the zeal I served my king, he would not have left me naked to my enemies in my gray hairs. Was he realized too late that he could not put his trust in King Henry as he was a mere mortal? He recognized that if he had served God, he would not have been deserted by him in the way his king did because he is, indeed, a faithful king. In 1 Samuel chapter 8, the people of Israel came to Samuel with a request for a king to govern them. They had seen the nations around them being ruled by kings, and they wanted one of those too. They no longer wanted to be ruled by Samuel and the judges, especially since Samuel's sons, whom had also appointed as judges, did not follow in his ways, but turned aside after gain. They took bribes and perverted justice. Samuel was upset by the request and took it personally. But God said, They have not rejected you, but they have rejected me from being their king over them. Just as they have done to me from the day I brought them up of the land of Egypt to this day, forsaking me and serving other gods. 1 Samuel chapters 8, verse 7 and 9. Even when they were warned of what treatment they would receive at the hands of a mortal king, they shouted, No, but we are determined to have a king over us, so that we also may be like other nations. In the end, that decision proved to be misguided because Saul, their first king, was horrible. But in spite of their rejection, God never abandoned Israel. He was always there waiting for their return. In Isaiah chapter 38, verse 18, the prophet writes, Therefore the Lord waits to be gracious to you. Therefore he will rise up to show mercy to you. God was indeed their faithful king. Down through the years, God has demonstrated that he is all the king we need. Yet man has always seen the need to put mere mortals before God. We rely on our political leaders whom we choose, thinking that they will take us through the difficult times. But our presidents, premiers, prime ministers, or leaders of government business, whatever we call them, are all flawed human beings. The writer in Psalm 146 knew this reality, seen especially in these words of warning. Do not put your trust in princes, 
in mortals in whom there is no help. The psalmist's wisdom speaks to the notion that the political process is not what ultimately matters or what should be the subject of our ultimate allegiance or consumption. Our allegiance should be to God, our faithful King. Our allegiance to our leaders, politically or otherwise, should not be the main factor which govern our actions. What we do, who we relate to, what causes we support, or social media postings. Instead, for people of faith, our ultimate allegiance and what should ultimately consume us must be our trust in God, our faithful King. The psalmist continues, Happy are those whose help is in the God of Jacob, whose hope is in the Lord their God. Our guiding post should be our allegiance to God, our faithful King. Wolsey, to his detriment, found that out too late. Had I but served my God with half the zeal I served my King, he would not have left me naked to my enemies in my gray hairs. While we continue to be involved in the social and political processes that living in communities entails, we must always be aware that our true allegiance, our ultimate hope, our unshakable confidence must only be grounded in God, our faithful King. Amen. Let us pray. Father, you have shown yourself a faithful king all throughout the scripture. Thank you for being faithful in our lives too. Forgive us for all those times we have doubted you, taken things in our own hands and not trusted you with our situation, but have relied on ourselves and the kings of this world. You love us and want the best for us. Your love for us is immeasurable and unconditional. Everything that happens in our life, you allow, even if it is painful at times. Remind us that you work all times for the good of those who love you. Prompt us in our moments of doubt to never, ever forget all the things you have done in our life. Never forget that you sent your very own son to die a brutal death on the cross at Calvary because you loved us. To never forget all the answered prayers and comfort you have provided to us over the years. To never forget that you are a faithful God and will one day spend eternity with you. To never forget that your plans for us are good as they are plans to prosper us and not to harm us. They are plans that give us hope and a future. Lord, we trust you today because you are our faithful God and King. And we know that your faithfulness never runs dry. We love you and remember you. Remember all that you are and remember all that you have done today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We now close with the chorus, Majesty. Majesty, worship is 